Netflix's newest fantasy movie, The School for Good and Evil is straight out of a fairy tale. The movie, starring Kerry Washington, Charlie Theron, Sophia Ann Caruso, and Sophia Wiley, tells the story of two best friends, Sophie and Agatha, who are dreaming of different lives. Sophie wants to be a princess, and Agatha a witch. One night, they are transported to the School of Good and Evil, where students are trained to become the heroes and villains of fairy tales. The women are placed in the opposite school to the one they think they belong in. Sophie ends up in the School of Evil and Agatha in the School of Good. They soon begin to realize everything is not quite what it seems when an evil force threatens the school. The School for Good and Evil is based on a series of six books of the same name by Soman Chinani. But how different is the book to the movie and what things have been kept the same? Regardless, if you have or haven't watched the new Netflix movie, there might have been details that you missed. So, which are those? That's what we're going to find out in today's video and more. But of course, before anything else, make sure first that you subscribe to our channel and you smash that notification bell for more updates on this. Now, let's dive in. How does The School for Good and Evil differ from the book it was based on? Netflix's The School for Good and Evil is based on a series of novels of the same name by Soman Chinani. With most of the film being inspired by the first book, the first book was published in 2013, with the final novel in the series One True King coming out in 2020. The School for Good and Evil's director, Paul Feig, has said himself that the crew picked and chose elements from the original novel to include within the movie, as to include everything would cost a trillion dollars. They looked at including the key elements the fans were passionate about and storylines that would advance the characters. Here are some of the differences between the film vis-a-vis -vis the original story. 1. No one knows who won the historic battle between the school's two founding brothers. Though both stories eventually showcase one single school master, the book uncovers the before the school's founding brothers battle to death. They were two school masters for both the good and evil schools. No one really knows who won the fight, but it is assumed that the school good master won due to the fact that good has continued to beat evil in conquest throughout the years. In the movie though, everyone assumed that the good brother won, but this is quickly debunked at the very end of the film. 2. Enrollment to the school is more distinct in the book. In the movie, the school for good and evil chooses to enroll students depending on their family lineage. You know, Cinderella's son would clearly attend the good school, whereas Maleficent's daughter would be placed in the evil school. Sophie and Agatha don't have a fairy tale background, so they are labeled readers, students from the outside world that get selected to join the school. However, in the book, the selection process for admission is a little different. In the book, every four years, two children from Sophie and Agatha's hometown of Gavaldon are kidnapped by a mysterious creature. These two students are then enrolled in either the school for good or evil. As the years goes on, Gavaldon is given a few new fairy tale books that encompass these stolen children. 3. Sophie's evil powers are not provoked by her evil brother Raphael in the book. Another key decrepancy between the book of the school for good and evil and the movie is the recurring visits that evil brother Raphael makes throughout the film. In the book, Raphael doesn't warn Agatha to stay away from the friend to urge Sophie to tap into her true powers with his forbidden blood magic. Instead, Sophie discovers her potential on her own, wrecking havoc and conflict without the influence of the evil schoolmaster. 4. In the book, the schoolmaster gives Sophie and Agatha a riddle to solve in order to change their fate. Sophie and Agatha seek the schoolmaster's advice to change their story written by the historian in both the book and the movie plot. However, their solution led up to more interpretation in the book. In the movie, the good schoolmaster, also we thought, explains to the girls that true love's kiss can rewrite their story. This is very different from the book's plot, where the schoolmaster gives out a riddle that Agatha ends up solving further along in the story. 5. The conflict at the Evers Ball and trial by tale in the movie is the split between three events in the book. Yes, that's right, there's no Evers Ball in the book's plot, and the trial by tale is a little modified, consisting of the snowball, the trial by tale, and the circus of talents. Each event ignites more trouble, though the book and movie stay true to the idea that Sophie wants to be with Tadros. 
There are various events that lead to his decision to choose good Agatha over the evil friend throughout these various tests. The trial by tale is used as an event in the movie for Sophie and Tedros to showcase their underlying love for one another. The book's trial, however, doesn't place as much emphasis on the pair's love, but more so on if Sophie can truly prove her good abilities. Like the movie, Agatha does attempt to help Sophie prove her goodness, but this backfires, leaving Sophie to become more jealous of Agatha. 6. The final battle between Sophie, Agatha, and the schoolmaster is completely different in the book. The final action of the stories might be the biggest notable difference between the book and the movie for the school for good and evil, though the evil schoolmaster still takes Sophie in as his true love. In the book, the two evils begin to decay together after sealing their love with a kiss. Agatha then storms in to find the pair, swiftly pulling them down to a river where she saved them from death. Sophie is still stuck and shot dead by an arrow mistakenly given by the evil schoolmaster, but in a shocking turn of events, a professor at the school embodies the spirit of the good schoolmaster and battles his evil brother to final death. This differs from the plot in the movie where Sophie and Agatha work together to take down the evil brother. 7. The girls leave abruptly without a goodbye in the book. At the climax of the movie, both Sophie and Agatha say goodbye to their friends at the school. Agatha even gives a final kiss to Tedros. And then, the two girls step into a portal that brings them back to their hometown of Givaldon. Not to mention, we're left with a shocking cliffhanger that alludes to the fact that Tedros is going to do whatever it takes to be with Agatha. In the book, though, after the final fight that ends in the evil schoolmaster's death, Sophie and Agatha randomly disappear into thin air. I mean, both alternate endings leave us with unanswered questions, so I guess that part checks out. Director Paul Feig admitted that most of these changes were not by mistake and were purely intentional. He said in an interview, It's all based on the story, obviously, because it's about the characters on their journey and making sure that that's what grounds us and keeps us going. But then it's about going. Okay, these are the main set pieces from the book that are important to people. These are the ones that I think we can make really cool and really advance the story and tell the characters through them. And then you just apply how do we do it in a way that we haven't seen before. It's fun. It's a really exciting challenge. Soman Chenani was involved in the production of the film and said he understood certain parts of the book would have to be changed to put the story on screen. He said, Only a foolish author would insist on a slavish translation that speaks to no one but the most literal of readers. A reader's imagination is usually much more vivid and precise than anything that can be put on screen. How about you? What details do you think you missed in the film vis-a-vis -vis the story printed in the best-selling book? Let us know in the comments below. That's all for today. We hope you enjoyed that video. And if you did, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and smash that notification bell for more episodes.